Hey guys, Deborah with Pinching Pesos here, and I have the paid what sales update video. I know, I know, guys, I have been totally slacking off. The last sales update I did was for <laughs> the week of April up to April the 9th. So yeah, um, it's June the 4th, and so I know I have been slacking off, but I promise I am going to get back on it every week. So I'm doing my April sales update and then I will be doing my entire month of May because there are so many amazing things that I sold in the month of May that I just can't not show them to you. They were great. Um, and May was actually one of the best months that I've had in probably the last year. I had some really great sales. So I want to make sure I show those to you as well. Um, so let's get through April. And then here in the next day or two, I'm going to go through the entire month of May. And then I will be up to date and on it for June. And every week thereafter, I will stay up to date on my weekly sales updates. So I am sorry I have been slacking off. I did do a post over on my Pinching Pesos page, the actual page for Pinching Pesos that I converted from being a like a store page. I went ahead and converted it over to just being like a Pinching Pesos update page because I really have more reseller supporters than I do customer supporters. So I thought that was the appropriate thing to do uh, is to go ahead and just transition it over into being a Pinching Pesos reseller update page. So I post the links for the reseller stew over there because I don't post them really anywhere else besides the reseller stew group. Um, I don't like to spam quote unquote my videos or things like that onto any other Facebook pages it's just a personal preference of mine. Um, I like everything to be kind of organic. I think I have plenty of subscribers. I have over 4,000 subscribers. I hit 4,000 subscribers last week. That's amazing. And uh, it's so funny because I hit the 4,000 subscribers. And then now this week, I have 4,100 subscribers. You guys are just like click, click, clicking the subscribe button. I think that's amazing. I can't, I can't even like fit it into my head that I have that many subscribers because March of 2015, so a little over a year ago, I did my thousand subscriber giveaway. I had 1,000 subscribers March of 2015, and now I'm at 4,100. That is insane to me, and I think it's crazy that you guys support me the way that you do. I think I have the most amazing subscribers. You're all very positive and supportive and you click that like button. Like I wouldn't believe because I, I've never asked for likes. I don't sit there and go, oh, like and comment and subscribe. and do blah, blah. I don't do that. You guys just do it on your own and <laughs> you're amazing. So, um, I did make a post over in the Pinching Pesos page, just giving you a little bit of update about what's been going on with me lately. I have been suffering from a bit of what I, you know, plainly said was mental illness. I, um, I'm mildly bipolar. I always said that I was ADD. I still think that I'm ADD. I have issues with memory loss and um, getting distracted very easily, uh, not being able to focus, not being able to put together schedules. Um, I tend to forget things. I tend to spend my entire day, I used to say, and I say it quite often, that I spend 50% of my life looking for something that I just had in my hand. 50% of my day is looking for something that I just had. I, you know, my husband has gotten accustomed to me. Like, uh, he reminds me, Hey, did you do this? And I'm like, oh, I totally didn't. And it's like, he just told me about it and it just goes in my head and then it like goes away. So, um, 
I made a post over in the Pinching Pesos page just thanking everybody for being so supportive and there for me and putting up with my procrastination and getting my videos out. Um, but I did for quite a while, I'll say several, several weeks, if not months, uh, got into an area with myself that I started avoiding the world where at first I thought it was because I was on a new medication. It was making me tired and it did. The first week that I was on it, I was going through these, um, what I called sudden fatigue syndrome where all of a sudden at like one o'clock in the afternoon or noon or 11 AM, I would just like nod out. And I'm like, I have to go take a nap like right now. And I would go take a nap for three hours and then I would wake up and then like maybe make something to eat and then an hour later I was like I need to go take a nap and take a nap again for like three hours so I was spending my entire day sleeping um but that only lasted a week and then it stopped and then I noticed um a couple of weeks ago I was just sleeping all day. I would uh, wake up, take my daughter to school, come back home, go back to bed, wake up multiple times and be like, oh, I'm still tired and go back to bed. And then the other day, it became apparently clear that no, it wasn't that I was tired. I was actually avoiding my day and so I was literally waking up and then looking around and going I don't really want to deal with any of this and going back to bed and the only reason why I would get up is because I knew the post office closed at 5 30 so I needed to ship my packages and so I'd get up to ship my packages make sure they got to the post office, go pick up my daughter from after school care. And then I would kind of start functioning at that point. You can't function live waking up at 3.45 in the afternoon. That's just like, who does that? People don't do that. That's like a luxury that doesn't exist. And I have a husband who works like 12 hours a day, you know, 12 to 14 hours actually, he gets up at eight, goes to work in his own business. He has a home repairs business. And then he'll get home at like 10 o'clock. And I haven't done anything. The only thing I did was ship my packages. The house was a mess. It's not nasty. Like, it's not like, oh my goodness, that's disgusting. But it's messy, you know, because I didn't put the laundry away or pick up the living room or sweep or whatever, uh, put the dishes in the dishwasher, you know? And so he's working 12 to 14 hours a day and he comes home and the house is kind of messy. There's no dinner made. And he's like, fortunately a really wonderful person. So he's not like that guy that's like, what you do all day, you know? But you get that look, you know, that look that you know as a woman, like, I had things to do and I didn't do them and I totally failed. I failed at wife. I failed at this. I made sure that I did the important things, like for my daughter, if there was something I was supposed to do for school or like, um, the other day I was supposed to take her a uh, birthday bag because her birthday is during the summer, but school's ending. And I made sure that I did that. So I make sure I do the really important things, but the everyday things of life, I wasn't doing, I was failing, failing as a person. And I was failing at my business. Like I have money I need to make. I have things that I have to pay. And although my husband has a very success, like successful business, I have my own bills that are not his responsibility. And I know we're in a marriage and all that, but my bills are my bills. They're not his responsibility. 
I have children outside of our marriage that I don't make him responsible for. If they have something that needs to be paid, I pay for it. Um, just like I bought airline tickets for my twins to come to Texas. Well, that was $1,300. I'm not going to make him pay for that. Those aren't his kids, quote unquote. You know, that's my expense. That's something I should be able to pay. So I have bills that I pay on my own. And um, I'm sitting here acting like I got all the money in the world when I don't. And uh, I feel really good though right now. I have finally in the past week-ish gotten my head together, gotten into a really positive place. If you ever need to listen to something uh, very motivating, there is a book called You Are a Badass. Uh, you can get it on Hoopla, H-O-O-P-L-A. Hoopla Digital is a loaning service that connects with Amazon and other services. If you have a library card, you can rent up to eight things, rent or borrow, up to eight things a month for free. So I was going to buy this book for $10 and then I realized, well, I could totally borrow it for free through Hoopla, which I totally did. And it's awesome because the author, I can't say author, that's not a hard word for me, author of the book is the one that narrates it. She is the narrator. And so it's really great. So you, you're, it's you're a badass. Um, go ahead and check it out on Hoopla and I can guarantee you it will open up your eyes to a lot of things. So I know, I, wow, I've been talking for a really long time. Let's go ahead and get into the sales video because I've got three weeks to cover. So let's go ahead and do that. Obviously this is already going to be a really long video. So, um, yeah, let's just. Um, I'm going to give you the numbers right away. I had 2,340 dollars and 24 cents in sales. My profit on those items was 1,127 dollars and 45 cents. That was on eBay, Amazon, Bonanza, and another site that I use that's called True, T-R-U-E, Gether, T-R-U-E-G-E-T-H-E-R. It syncs with Amazon. It syncs with eBay. They don't charge you any fees. I haven't figured out how they function without charging any fees. Um, I've been signed up with them for almost two years. And... Um, it just works and every now and then I get a sell on it and it doesn't cost me any fees so hey it's just extra sales uh, they do uh, feed into Google shopping and uh, all the other browser shopping type things Yahoo shopping and all of that so I'm very much one of those people that if you can sync your stores where you already did all the work you know you already did it on eBay why not sync it to everything you can sync it to? So, yeah. Um, my sales all um, are normally 50% profit. So this came out right at 50% profit. It was $2,340 in sales and $1,127 in profit. So let's get going on what we sold. I've had a lot of people tell me that they have a hard time reading what is on the YouTube screen. So I tried to make the text bigger. Uh, I don't know how much that's going to benefit you, but I'm trying the best I can. So here it, <laughs> you can see all my tabs. Here is my eBay sales. Okay. So this is a Cuisinart convection bread maker motor belt. I had bought one Gosh, it's got to be over a year ago. I was going to sell it whole. I paid a lot of money for it. It was $24.99. I put it in my car. And you know those little latches or hinges on the side of your trunk? 
Well, when I put my trunk down, one of the hinges actually bent the top of the convection bread maker and cracked the glass insert. So it was broken. I sold the paddle, I sold the bread pan, and then the last thing that sold was this motor belt. That's all I pieced out was those three pieces. I threw the rest away and it sold for $19.95 plus shipping, which is great because I paid $24.95 for the whole thing. And I know I sold the bread pan. It was a long time ago. It sold right away um, because it was a brand new machine um, out of the box, but it was brand new. There was no scuffs on anything and the paddle and the basket sold right away for over $20 on each one of those pieces. So this one went for $19.95 plus shipping, which I mean, it weighs nothing. So there that goes. Um, then I sold a smart Bluetooth fitness watch. It's kind of a piece of crap watch. It's like a um, knockoff Fitbit and there's the videos all over YouTube about these people reviewing them. I even saw locally on Facebook, somebody was trying to sell these for $35. I would feel like a total jerk selling one of these for $35. It is not equivalent to a Fitbit. It is worth $8.95, which is what I have mine listed for. It is totally worth $8.95. It is not worth $35. So, but the guy that was selling them locally he had a lot of people interested in them. So I kind of started second guessing myself. I was like, man, I should have totally sold them locally. But I, I have a conscience and I really just can't sell something that is just such a, it's not even second rate. It's like 10th rate, uh, device that, um, you know, I just, I just can't sell something that's a junky Chinese knockoff that I could buy wholesale. I mean, you can buy these things wholesale for like a dollar or less. So anyway, I sold two of those in the month of April for $8.95 plus shipping. Uh, the next thing I sold was these cliff bars. I have done this successfully for the last two years. In January, they clearance out the seasonal cliff bars. Uh, there's pumpkin pie. There is normally like a um, ginger spice. And I think there's one other flavor that has pecan. It's like pecan pie. So the uh, season before last, I had sold all of those on Amazon. Um, this year, it seemed like people kind of caught on, and so the prices just weren't as good on Amazon as they were in 2015, so I went ahead and listed them on eBay. I was really concerned that these guys were going to expire before they ever sold, because you can see the expiration date is in June, and uh, I bought these back in January. I paid... 37 cents a piece for them. This was an 18 count box, but they went ahead and sold, thankfully, April the 11th for $29.95 plus shipping. They went into a flat rate padded envelope and I got a really good uh, feedback on them. This show, uh, soda stream machine came in uh, the last batch of Amazon liquidation that I bought. I will not be buying any more Amazon rejects. I know you've heard me talk about them uh, in multiple sales videos over the past six months. Um, the last batch that I bought is the last batch. I, um, I got seven boxes of stuff. I ended up taking three boxes of it after I just couldn't bear to look at it anymore. Um, I've mentioned it before, but I really love doing eBay. Uh, there's something really personal about it, picking out the products, uh, getting this kind of you who this is amazing, this is a treasure kind of feeling. And when I got the last batch of Amazon reject stuff, like palette reject stuff, 
I really was over it. I just couldn't look at one more cell phone case or one more tablet case or I've said it before like I said that I I find that entire process to be a very soulless you you don't even pay attention to what you're selling you you have no emotions into it it's very cut and dry you know this is what I can sell it for. Here it is. Bye. And that works great for a lot of people. It doesn't work great for me. It's not the business for me. And so out of the seven boxes that I received in my last batch, I took three of the boxes unlooked at, uncherry picked, and I shipped them off to another eBay seller, hoping that he would be able to benefit from them. Um, because he has one thrift store in his area. He doesn't have a car. Um, he's in a small town. And he just really doesn't have access to the amazing sourcing that... Get out of the my way, George. The amazing sourcing that I have here. I mean, I could go out any day of the week and find amazing things. He can go out every day and he might find one thing that he can resell for a decent profit. So I really thought if I sent him those boxes, it might really help him, you know, economically. Unfortunately, it's turned out that he wasn't having much more success than I was. And uh, even though I shipped them to him, you know, I paid all the shipping costs and everything. He hasn't found a whole lot, of, like, a whole lot of success with it either. So that was kind of, you know, discouraging for me. And I had really hoped that it was going to really be successful for him. But in the other three and a half boxes that I had, one of them had this soda stream maker in there and I went ahead and sold it for $59.95 plus shipping. So, uh, I find a lot of success with the soda streams. If you find one at the thrift store, uh, make sure that it has the carbonator. Even if the carbonator is empty, those carbonators alone are going to sell for $15 to $20 because the way that soda streams work is you can send those off and get a refill, totally refilled for free. So, um, yeah, the carbonator is a very important aspect of buying a used soda stream. This one, fortunately, was new. It also included the bottles. If you ever see the soda stream bottles at the store, go ahead and buy those too if they're a reasonable price because the soda stream bottles sell for good money and so do the carbonators. The actual machines themselves don't sell for very much at all um, because people already have them. The only one that I know of that is definitely one that you should look out for is the Soda Stream Penguin. Uh, I'm going to show it to you. It actually looks like a penguin. And what it does is it makes carbonated mineral water. So, Soda Stream Penguin. I found one before it sold really really quickly and if you can find the bottles for them you kind of hit like a little gold mine so you can see here this is the penguin that one sold for a hundred and sixteen dollars so and like I said it looks just like a little penguin um, the last one I found was $7.99. And I don't think the store even knew what it was. So um, if you see any of these, definitely pick them up. The carafts for this one, unlike the other bottles for the soda streams that are plastic, these ones are glass. The ones for the penguin are glass bottles. So um, you can see like this one here. This is what it looks like. Come on, you can do it, you can get big. Okay, 
let me move my head out of the way. So this is what the carafe looks like for the Soda Stream Penguin. This one sold for $97. I don't know if it has a maker's mark on the bottom that says Soda Stream. I've never found one. I only know from research whenever I was researching the used penguin that I found that there were glass carafe bottles for it. It's kind of like the upscale version of the Soda Stream. So that's what the carafe looks like and um but i have no idea if it actually has like a a name plate on the bottom but if you see anything like this it's for the soda stream penguin and it's definitely worth you picking up i know that the stores wouldn't know what it was for to them it would just be another glass item i couldn't imagine that they would price it any more than two or three dollars so yeah, make sure you look out for the penguins. They look like this. Uh, come on. They look just like a penguin. So yeah, there you go. Um, the next thing that I sold was a part of my palette rejects as well. This was a leather case for a Samsung Galaxy 6. Surprisingly, it sold for for full price at $29.95, they are very nice cases. I mean, full leather, crafted, very nice. They're made in the USA. Um, I can't say that you're ever going to find one of these. Um, the brand on that one, I didn't even put it in here, but um, they were very nice. So $29.95 plus shipping was really good for, because normally in my palette reject stuff, I just get a bunch of crappy Chinese, um, you know, cell phone cases. I sold another one of the collars. I am down to less than 10. It might even be five collars at this point. Uh, this was one that I had left over because I, it didn't have an Amazon listing and I wasn't going to make an Amazon listing for one collar. So I went ahead and listed it on eBay and they've been selling for full price. So this one went for $16.95 plus shipping. I paid $5.99 for all of those collar, each collar that I had from uh, clearance. Well, it wasn't really clearance. It was like a store promotion they were running for one day. And they had all of the Kong collars for sale for $5.99. Uh, this came from the Palette Rejects as well. These are facial, facial cleansing brushes. It's kind of crappy. I tried one out. The motor on it is, is just really not amazing. It, it definitely is worth $8. You can't compare it to any of the higher end even $20 facial cleansers are going to beat this thing out of the water. So I have it priced $7.95 plus shipping, which is an appropriate price for this particular item. Uh, I have this one uh, put into my spreadsheet as like a dollar is what it's worth. Uh, this is one of the Leapfrog uh, fridge phonics that I had. I used to buy these all the time. Every time I ever saw one, I would pick it up. Um, they used to bring in really good money, but they did go into a bolo list uh, over the years. And the price on these has kind of really fallen off unless it's gotten better in it since the last time I looked at it. But I mean, you used to be able to bring in some super great money with the fridge phonics. And um, like this right here, the fact that it's mint in the box, oh my goodness, this should have sold for like 80 bucks, but $9.89, that's, that's insane. Unless this has $40 shipping, no, it doesn't. Um, these things used to bring in very, very good money, and they just don't bring in the money that they used to. Um, it's definitely one of those death by bolo kind of uh, items. This one new in the box should have sold for well over $100. Um, but I I don't think I've picked one up in any recent time frame. I could be wrong, but I, 
I really don't think that I have. I what I did at one point is I took all of the the little sets that I had bought and I just put them as bulk. I had a hundred letters that I sold in bulk for I believe twenty nine ninety five. I took all of the bases that I had. I had one that was in English, one that that was in Spanish, and I put it together as a lot. Um, I had all of the little animals that I had, and I put them as a lot um, because they they just really weren't bringing the money that they used to at some point. If you are finding these for a dollar, hey, dude, buy them. But I was paying like four ninety nine a set for them. And it just really wasn't worth it at, at that point. Um, but, you know, if you can find them in bulk, man, get them. But I, I would suggest that you make sure that you do your research before you spend uh, any hard money on it. If you're somebody that doesn't have a lot of money, uh, if you have to be really picky about what you spend your money on, make sure that you're researching if it's something that you should spend your $5 on. Um, okay, next. And this one was missing the E. I had sold this one before, and it was actually supposed to go to China. And then the person sent me a message saying that they didn't know it was missing the E, so they needed to cancel. <clears throat> this one came out of the palette rejects. This was a uh, Minnie Mouse uh, step on keyboard, like similar to uh, the movie. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, it had a damaged box. I went ahead and just shipped it in a poly miller. I have these really big poly millers that are like 24 inches by. 18 inches or whatever because the box was already damaged so what difference did it make I got really good feedback on it because I had it for $19.95 free shipping because that was the price that compared to the ones that were you know going for that this is a Dynex USB microphone I paid $9.98 for it it was to go to Amazon um, what ended up happening coincidentally is I had it in my shipment for Amazon, but I forgot to put it in the box. And so when it got to Amazon and it hit reconciliation where, you know, they say, hey, there's something missing or there's something extra. And I told them, oh, I forgot to send it in to you. It's not in the box. For some reason, they ended up reimbursing me for the item like I had sent it in and they lost it, which is really strange. Um, they actually reimbursed me as uh, warehouse damage. So I'm not sure what microphone they were talking about. So I got reimbursed for this item. I went ahead and listed it on eBay because I still had it because I never sent it in. And uh, it sold for $34.95 plus shipping. So I kind of got paid for it twice. It kind of, you know, worked out. But uh, it was new in the package. And I picked it up at the thrift store. So if you ever see this brand, it, this particular one, actually, that is the going rate for it. It's not uh, an escalated price. It does sell really well on Amazon and has uh, really good feedback. This came out of the Palette Rejects. This is something that if you do find anything that has to do with the RFID, uh, those are the things that... Um, the blocking of that are for people that are really concerned about their credit card information getting stolen and so it's supposed to block the waves of those identity theft machines and um it's almost like fear mongering thing anything that feeds into a fear that people have can sell really well this one had an MSRP of $64.95. That's what was on the box. Um, but that's not what it was selling for on eBay. And when I tried to list it on Amazon, it came up as restricted. So I couldn't sell it over there. So I went ahead and sold it for $14.95 on eBay. Plus shipping, I got a really good review for it. They were really happy with it. So there you go. Uh, this also came out of the Palette Rejects. These were just really cheap 
if you wanted to buy these, you could get them on Alibaba for like super duper duper cheap. Uh, little heads, uh, head strap, uh, headlights, uh, LED lights. Um, I sold them for seven ninety five free shipping. They fit in a box. They went for uh, less than eight ounces, and um, I got them out of the way. Okay, so this was a bear. If you watched me whenever I did my live tweeting, uh, the very first time that I really went out shopping after, I think I had a buying freeze or something like that, and I just lost my mind at the Goodwill. I spent five hours there. Five hours at one store. I spent $350 at one Goodwill and I checked out three times because my cart kept getting full. So if you check out Pinching Pesos on Twitter, you'll see the live tweeting that I was doing. I should have had a lot of fun doing that. I had a lot of fun doing the live tweeting where I was uh, taking pictures of what I was finding and I, I did some video. Um, I really enjoyed that quite a bit. Uh, this was one of the things that I found there was this uh, vintage bear. And um, I believe this actually sold on sale. I don't think that it went full price for $59. Let me see. Um, Dakin. Uh, it went for $35.97, which is still an amazing price for a stuffed bear. Um, it's vintage from 1997. It's what's called a pot belly. If you look at it, it's got a really big, um, poofy, poofy belly. Um, and yeah, that's the vintage tag on it. So $35.97, really great price. You can see somebody else has the mama and the baby for $65. I mean, that's just amazing for a stuffed animal. Um, and I paid $2.99 for it. Um, I was talking today when I was on the reseller Pulse with Ronnie. Yes, a girl infiltrated the reseller Pulse. Uh, Pete was out and so was Chad. So me and Ronnie started the show and then uh, Dave came on and so did Rudy um, to kind of fill out the show and make it more complete since originally it was just going to be Ronnie all by himself. And uh, I talked about on that show about um, spending less time in the stores. I feel like if I spend any more than 20 or 30 minutes in a store, I am really pecking for the profits. I end up finding everything that's great within the first 20 or 30 minutes. And then after that point, anything else that I'm putting in my cart is really something that I probably should have passed up on. Not because it doesn't have profit and not because it's not something I can make money on, but just because I'm really digging. I'm digging, digging, digging deep for the money. And, I, and I'm and i sitting there going, oh, well, yeah, I know I can list this and I know I can make money. But when once it makes it into my house, it's just going to sit there on those shelves because I'm going to list that amazing stuff that I bought in that first 20 or 30 minutes and then everything else that's extra, it's over there in those bins. And then what ends up happening is the next day or the week later, I go back to a store and the first 20 or 30 minutes in that store, I buy some really amazing stuff. And then if I spend any more time in it, I'm just kind of pecking, 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 and it goes back over there in the shelf with the other stuff that I had from the week before. And it's a continual process of me buying amazing things and then mediocre things, and I never list the mediocre things. And that's really something that I am trying to cut out on doing. So right now, since my office is clean because Patrick has done an amazing job cleaning the office. I completely redid the office prior to Patrick coming in. I put in a new workstation for myself. I put in a new workstation for Patrick. 
I, I completely redid the whole thing. Uh, yesterday, he, he redid the patio again for the third time since he's been back from San Francisco. He redid the shed. It looks amazing. And I had just redid the shed two months ago. So he was just organizing everything. Um, there really isn't anything stopping us at this point. So from here on out, I am going on a buying freeze again. I'm going to go through these things to find the things that are worth me listing. Patrick is going to be helping me list. I'm going to teach him how to do um, drafts. He already does photos. He already edits the photos, but I hadn't taught him how to do drafts. I taught him how to create shipments on Amazon, but I really kept him away from eBay. But what I'm going to do is teach him how to do drafts where he can kind of put the general title of the item of what it is. I want him to fill out the um, item specifics. I want him to put in the measurements and the conditions and then I will come in after the fact and actually do the finalization of the listing with exactly what the title is supposed to be, exactly what the description is supposed to say. Make sure that everything's good, put the price and all of that. So with him, as opposed to with just me, the last time I did a buying freeze when I listed everything myself, I really think that over the next couple of weeks, we should be able to knock out that in this entire backlog. And then after that point, what we'll be doing is going to stores and spending no more than 20 or 30 minutes per store, because that's where your profit is. For me personally, the first 20 minutes or 30 minutes of the store is where my profit is for eBay. Everything after that is just a, a second class item, basically. So that's what I'm really going to be focusing on is spending a minimal amount of time in the stores. So I'm not sitting there just kind of digging in the bottom of a uh, the profit margins so anyway but this store that I bought this from I spent five hours there and I can honestly tell you I still have items that I purchased and this was several months ago sitting over there in those bins that I haven't listed yet okay oh I'm thirsty let me see that. all right next up this also came out of the palette rejects this is a mineral powder uh i compared it with the other ebay listings and went ahead and listed it on the higher scale i always list on the higher scale since i do best offer i have no problem at all listing on the higher end of the spectrum i will always list on the higher end of the spectrum they can make me an offer this sold for full price for 19.95 and it actually went internationally so they paid for their own shipping uh, this is a base for a cocoa latte. I was buying these at the time that they were doing recalls on these machines because the actual pitcher had lead in the <clears throat> in the bushing of it. I believe that recall has ended and my lazy self never ever ever sent in any of like the six or seven eight pitchers that I have out there that are worth $40 a piece. So that means $320. I never sent any of them in. I do know other resellers, based off of my recommendation, did do that. So they did make money. So I'm really glad that I recommended that to people. I personally never did it myself because I suck. I could probably still take them to Bed Bath & Beyond. Uh, because Paul, on my recommendation for that, did take his to Bed Bath & Beyond. Uh, because if there's a recall they're able to issue you a um, a gift card. So even though the recall is kind of done as far as their toll-free numbers shut down, uh, based on the recall, I could probably still take it to Bed Bath & Beyond and see, you know, what I could get from them because I do have eight of the pictures. But I'm still selling the bases. I sold out of all of my spouts, the spouts that went to the pitchers. I sold out of all of them. I still have one uh, base left in the gray. I have two more left in the um, 
ivory. So it went for $14.95 uh, free shipping because, I, I, look, I'm not making any money on them. I already made my money on the spouts and the lids. Um, I went ahead and priced the bases low just to get rid of them and make a little bit of money on them. The bases basically make me back the money that I spent on the machines. And then the spouts and the lids are what make me profit. Uh, this came out of the palette rejects as well. I believe this was actually on sale. Let's see. No, not that. Uh, let's see. Yes, it was on sale. I spent a lot of time over the past um, month or so uh, putting my store on 40% off sale. This one sold for $35.98 uh, plus shipping. I um, I found that putting my store, which I was doing quite often over the last six weeks, I was putting my store, anything that was over $30, I was putting on sale for 40% off. And since I charge shipping and I don't generally pay any more than $10 for anything, even putting my store 40% off since I price on the higher end of the spectrum, I'm still making a very decent profit. I'm probably making more profit than some of the people that are just listing their items outright because it's on the higher end and I charge shipping and, you know, I'm not paying as much as some people. So I'm still making a very decent profit, even putting my items 40% off. And I had a very successful round of uh, putting things 40% off. I think I did it three times. Uh, this is a safety net that I actually sent off to Amazon. So this was fulfilled um, merchant channel fulfillment. Uh, Multi-channel fulfillment, I said, what did I say? Multi-channel? Multi-channel fulfillment is very inexpensive. If you've never looked into the fees of multi-channel fulfillment, you really need to just Google it. If you Google multi-channel fulfillment fees, you'll see that the actual fees that are associated with Amazon storing your product and shipping your product are super duper duper low. And um, what I would suggest to you is if, uh, if you're worried about it, go ahead and take a product that's in your inventory at Amazon and do a test shipment and, and really look at how low the shipping is. It's super cheap. And if so, if you set up your eBay listings properly, you need to make sure that if you're trying to get the cheapest shipping, that's economy, that you make sure that you put your handling time appropriate, which is going to be, I would say to be safe four days. Now, doing your handling time at a longer uh, handling is not going to affect your, uh, your um, top-rated seller at all. The way that your top-rated seller works is as long as you fulfill your item within the appropriate handling time, it doesn't affect your top-rated seller. What it does is for that individual item... That just means you're not going to get your 20% discount because you didn't fulfill it within one day. But that doesn't mean that it takes away from your top rated seller. So if you put 10 day handling time, you're still going to keep your top rated seller. You're just not going to get your 20% off discount for your top rated seller on that one particular item. So anyway, uh, this was something I had uh, multi-channel fulfilled with Amazon. Uh, I had bought this for $4.99 on clearance at the grocery store. Next up, uh, these came off of the uh, palette rejects as well. I put this price uh, as like a buy cost of about $5. I uh, got a very good feedback on these. They actually just went into a big poly mailer because you can see the packaging was already dented and everything. So $29.95 free shipping. These were also palette rejects. Um, sold the uh, one of these cases for $9.95. Um, plus shipping, they go in a poly mailer and they ship out um, at a 13 ounce rate. This phone mate I paid $4.99 for. I believe this went on sale 
Let me see. For twenty-seven ninety-eight. Oh, sorry, lost my page. Twenty-seven ninety-eight. At one point, I was running a sixty percent off sale. I was really just trying to clear things out. Um, I don't like things being stagnant, and since I pay so little for my items and I price them so high, I have no issues at all running sales that are astronomical. And customers love higher sales. Uh, this also came out of Palette Rejects. I sold a buttload of these. It says two, but I actually probably sold eight. Um, they fit into a uh, regional A box. And um, yeah, $29.95. I put in a buy cost of $5 on those. Uh, Cranium Caribou. Okay, so the whole game itself is not selling for that much. But... All the pieces of the game are doing great. I have sold three sets of those balls for $14.95. Can you believe it? I also sold the, um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? The little, look at this, the little treasure chest thing. I have sold two of those. One of them sold for $7. The other one sold for $12. 12 and I have sold two of the oh come on where is it two of these little key things that you don't even really need for the game two of those little key things it sold for $12.82 on Bonanza and I sold one on eBay for $12.95 so for $4.95 for the game you can sell all those little pieces for like over $30 for three pieces for the key, for the little treasure chest jewel, and for the balls. I mean, that's insane. And you can't even sell the whole freaking game for that much money. And I also sold, which will show up on the May video, um, the cards. I sold the cards and the instructions. So yeah, Caribou is a very, very good game to uh part out all right next up i sold two of these in the month of april i have actually sold quite a few of these you can see that i've sold 12. um they're little purse organizers if you want to get these on alibaba you can buy them they're like a dollar something they sell really really well um they're a very uh, steady seller and um super easy to ship they weigh less than four ounces you put them in a poly miller you go on about your day um it would definitely be a great item to buy on uh, alibaba uh, i bought these for 2.99 i sold one of them on ebay for 39.95 and i sold one of them on true gather uh, it was one of my only sales in april on true gather uh, I sold it for $30.62. Uh, this was a hot sauce puzzle, and it was really good because it had sriracha in there. Uh, sold for $29.95 plus shipping. I paid $2.99 for the puzzle. It was uh, new in the box. I didn't put it on Amazon just because there wasn't a listing. Next thing was part of my uh, what's in the bag plush items that I bought, which I need to do the update for. Um, I've sold through a lot of that stuff. This was in there just as a random item. I never expected it to sell. You can see it sold April the 22nd, which was after Easter. Uh, it's just the Easter bunny with the sweater on it. I sold it for $7.95 plus shipping. Had a buy cost of 50 cents. Uh, this is another tablet case. Uh, I sold this one for $14.95 free shipping. It shipped out for less than 13 ounces, so it just went in a poly mailer. Uh, this was part of the palette rejects. I gave it a buy cost of about $2. Okay, so this was a True Tech Space Saver under the counter kitchen CD radio. I <laughs> Space. I put space saving. It, it is a space saver, but it's not by Black and Decker. Um, I believe this one actually. Oh, sorry. Um, was on sale. Hang on. You know, I don't think I have this particular item in my 
thingamajigger. This is something I sold as well. Um, Yeah, it went on sale for fifteen. No, I think it actually went on best offer for fifteen ninety eight plus shipping. I only paid four ninety nine for it, so I really wasn't worried. Fifteen ninety eight plus shipping was great. Uh, really didn't care. These mules, I sold them. They were on sale. Um, they went for. Fifteen ninety eight on sale plus shipping. Um, I paid six ninety nine for them, so not bad. And like I said, people really feel like they're getting an amazing deal. I had them priced thirty nine ninety five, and he got them for fifteen dollars. So people feel like, oh my gosh, I got this great deal. Um, and so that's a win for everyone. All right, next up. I sold another pair of skinny jeans. I actually, I think I sold, no, just one, uh, $11.95, free shipping. I am actually almost finished with them. I have probably five or six left, I think. What the Pug mug I paid uh, $0.99 cents for. It actually arrived with a chip in it which I thought was really strange. Um, I got uh, the postal service to pay me for the chip and I'm pretty sure the customer just kept it. It was a really tiny, tiny chip. It wasn't like it got, you know, completely broken. It's definitely something they could still use. So they got their mug and I got my money back from the post office. Uh, this came out of the Palette Rejects. It was a flashlight with rechargeable batteries. Went for $19.95 plus shipping. Uh, this is an amplifier for the phones. I always try uh, to buy anything like this that I find that is an amplifier or a light sensor or anything that's for people that are hard hearing or special needs. Maybe they're deaf. Um, I've had a lot of success with buying these particular items. Um that are signals for telephone calls. I uh, sold this one, I believe it was actually on sale. Let's see. Um, no, oh, hang on. Hot sauce bottles. Fourteen thirty-seven is what it sold for. Um, so it was on sale, forty percent off, uh, plus shipping, and I paid a dollar ninety-nine for it. These boots. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a little story because. Okay, so you know how I have been a very much a outcrier of the do not listen to people, do not take your smart post items to the post office, take them to FedEx, stop listening to people that say that you can take them to the post office because you're not supposed to, it's the wrong thing to do, you're losing your insurance, you're not going to get the same service, it's blah, 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 right? I've talked about it multiple, multiple times. <sighs> I got lazy one Saturday. I only had packages that were going to the post office. I had one smart post package. I didn't want to go in the traffic to FedEx. Everybody says it's okay. Even though I've been an advocate for a long time saying, don't do it, don't do it. Don't take your smart post to the post office. Don't be that person. I went against myself and all of my advice and I dropped my smart post package at the post office. Okay. Apparently parcels, parcel post ground, what they call it now ground, doesn't scan it at all at the local office. It gets whipped off to Dallas because all it does is go to the post office. It's put on a truck. They don't scan it. Went to Dallas, it got scanned. I went to California. 
and made it to the city it was supposed to be delivered to. They never attempted the delivery. They turned it around and they sent it to Dallas again. And it sat there for 12 days and nothing happened with it. And then a week later, they delivered it to my P.O. box. There was nothing wrong with it, nothing wrong with the label, because I asked the post office about it, and they're like, well, maybe the label was damaged and they couldn't deliver it. I said, well, it has a packing slip in it. And they said, okay, well, it'll go to dead mail, and then at some point, they'll open it, and they'll see where it belonged to, and they'll send it back to you. Well, I got the package back, and there, yes, the box was crunched up like a little accordion, but the address label was fine. Like, they could totally see the address. I'm not sure why it came back to me, but they never, ever attempted delivery. It went from Austin to Dallas, Dallas to California, California to Glen Garden, and Glen Garden back to Dallas, and then back to Austin, and never attempted delivery. So my customer was very kind about it, and he said, hey, I still want these boots. You know, if you get them back, let me know. So I let him know I got them back, and he, even though the transaction was canceled, he went ahead and paid for them again. He paid full price for them, he paid for the shipping, and I shipped them out to him again, and this time I shipped them FedEx Ground. Um, so this is a little lesson learned for Deborah to listen to Deborah because it might have just been karma with all of the times that I said, please stop listening to people. Do not take your smart post items to the post office. They don't belong there. And I should have just not been lazy and taken my package to FedEx. So anyway, my customer should uh, be receiving his boots after an entire month he should be getting them very soon. I paid $12.99 for those. I actually bought those whenever Margaret from Texas Gal Treasures and Tanya of Thrifty Treasures came to Austin for a, a visit. Um, we went to like this really crappy Goodwill that's by my house. And that was one of the few things that I bought while we were there. And uh, I paid $12.99 for them. So anyway. Uh, I bought these at Walgreens back, for some reason, last April, they decided to clearance out all their summer stuff, even though summer hadn't started yet, and so I bought several of these little puddle jumpers for $2.75. They went off to Amazon, but there was something wrong with the listing, and so the fees were like super duper high, and I'm not really sure why, and I was going to get long-term storage fees on these really light items. They weighed like less than 10 ounces. And it was going to cost me like $5 a piece for their long-term storage fees. So I went ahead and pulled them back last um, the long-term storage fee time in, uh, what was it, February? I went ahead and pulled them back, and I've sold through them. I have one left. And so, yeah, I paid $2.75 for these little guys. I paid $2.99 for this entire game and sold Taz for $7.95 plus, uh, free shipping. Uh, these came off of Palette Rejects. They're breathalyzers. I've been trying to test them if I drink. Uh, like the last time me and my husband went on a date night, I had one of them in the car just trying to <gasps> blow on it to see if it worked. And I know I had three margaritas, but it said I was only at like 0.02% and I knew that thing was lying. <laughs> But anyway, I've sold several of these, uh, and the customers seem really happy with them, so I might be just blowing on it wrong. Uh, I bought these curtains for $5.99 a panel, and uh, so I sold um, one of them. The lady is actually making a baby blanket with it. She left me really good feedback. Um... This is another PetSmart uh, pet trainer collar. I always try to buy those if I see them. If you see any, I said PetSmart, PetSafe. If you see any of the PetSafe items, they always sell really, really well. Um, this one went for $39.95 plus shipping. This came out of the Palette Rejects. It didn't have any of the initial starter items that it was supposed to go with. It was just the machine. 
Uh, if you have all the starter items, it'll sell for probably $150. I went ahead and sold this one for $49.95 plus shipping. This I bought for a car that I don't have anymore. Um, I used to have a Malibu, and this was the trunk release for it. And then we never ended up installing it, and we actually traded the car in on the car that we have now. So I went ahead and sold it. This went off to Denmark. Um, so they paid $9.95 plus shipping to Denmark. And that's another one of those travel inserts. I paid $4.99 for this. If you see any of the Bible study audio CD sets or DVD sets, I would suggest that you buy them. Those sets are so expensive to buy new. Um, even the used ones of these items sell for quite a bit of money. I sold mine for $59.95 plus shipping. The new ones were selling for $90 and I was the only one that had a used one. So I figured I was very safe in listing it at $60 because it was in very good condition. There was no scratches or anything. So there was nothing differentiating it between a new one versus my used one other than the fact that it didn't have like its packaging. That was it. So it sold very quickly in less than a week. I paid $4.99 for it um, at Savers. This is another set of curler, uh, just curlers. When I took all of my curlers that I had that I'd been saving up and I said, I don't want to deal with any of these. And all I did was take the curlers off of them and I threw the bases away. So I've been slowly selling through all of the additional curlers that I have. I think I sell a set a week um for just the replacement curlers and they do really really well so uh if you have access to curlers for a very reasonable price and you don't want to deal with actually shipping the bases or don't want to deal with them being dirty and gross um just selling the actual individual curlers themselves might be a very practical uh feedback feller you know to get some more feedback get some more sales rank um this came out of the palette rejects as well and uh this is one of those micro needle things i woo, couldn't imagine like little needles poking into all of you but it's apparently supposed to be really good for you i really don't care i'm not rolling needles over my face but it sold for 29.95 plus shipping uh this came from goodwill i paid 2.99 for this particular item it is a uh, brand new sealed the sims for pc best of business collection i have been very successful at selling sims items um i've bought all kinds of different sims and if you buy the older ones you don't even have to in there for pc you don't even have to worry about them having like um like their security codes are no good or product keys are no good uh the newer ones that are you know sims 4 or whatever you might worry about that but the older versions you don't have to worry about those things if you're buying the sims used this one happened to be new um so it sold for $19.95 free shipping and i paid $2.99 for it this spycraft sealed deck actually came in a bag of sealed um not sealed it came in a bag of cards just like playing cards that i bought at savers um and they just savers tends and like they bag up things and they put them on the wall and they actually have a playing card section and some of those are definitely worth looking at because some of those playing cards are highly collectible um but in one of those sets of playing cards was a spy craft set so it sold for 8 95 free shipping and i had gotten four decks of cards in that one package and i paid a dollar 99 for the entire set so you can say that this one cost me 50 cents uh this came out of the uh plush items that i had bought for what's in the bag um so i'll we'll say this was a 50 cent item i sold it for 9.95 plus shipping and i would say that's a pretty successful sell for april 30th it's a santa claus so that was all of my eBay sales for April. Um, I think I did really well for 
that time frame. Uh, Amazon sales were at four hundred and thirty-seven dollars. I do I did have an Amazon loan that I paid off in the month of April. Um, so that also came out of what would have been a considered profit. A payment of $167 came out of my $439 because it was repaying my Amazon loan. So minus my fees and everything, I actually pulled a report. If you go into your payments, this might be a really helpful thing for you to do. If you go into your payments and you can set there and do the exact dates and you can see that I did April the 1st through April the 30th, you can download this uh, transactional report, pull it into Amazon, and you can see that it actually breaks it up by date and what the item was how much you sold it for and what your fees were so what i did is i actually created another column called cost of goods and right here next to where i got payment i put the actual cost of goods for each one of those items so when i scrolled down i went ahead and did a sum formula for my entire cost of goods which was 30 i'm sorry 93 dollars and 83 cents and then out of all my fees plus my actual payments, so my payments minus my fees, minus my store charge, minus how much I paid for my loan repayment, I had $151.02 in actual money that came in, minus my cost of goods, I made a little section here for profit, and I profited $57.19. Obviously, next month is going to be much higher than that because I'm not going to have that fee, that uh, loan payment that I'm paying because I actually paid off my loan. I've gotten a couple Amazon loans um, over the last two years. They generally give me about $1,000. And, and that's really good because you pay them off in six months. It comes out of your transactions. So it's not something like that you're paying on your own. It just gets paid automatically. Um, so yeah. So I had $57.19 in profit after all my fees and loans and all of that stuff. Uh, on Amazon, I had $25.92 in profit on Bonanza because um, I had a couple sales over there. I had $18.65 in profit from Together. So when it was all said and done, I had $1,127.45 in profit from everything. And I actually think that's a pretty amazing profit considering the fact that I have been an incredible mess and have barely conducted any business whatsoever. Um, when I looked at my tally sheet, which I keep track of how much I list, for the entire month of May, all I did was I listed five items on the second, two items on the third. I didn't list it all again until May the 7th, whenever I listed two things. I listed 11 things on the 19th, 8 things on the 20th, and 4 things on the 27, uh, 22nd. So that was 5, 7, 9, 20, 28. I listed 32 items in the entire month of May. I sent no shipments to Amazon. Um, so I think for the very little effort that I put in to my business and the horrible mental state of mind that I was in, $1,127 in profit is amazing because if I was working a regular job, I would have probably called in sick every single day. I was a mental catastrophe. So I think it's amazing that I did as well as I did for as little work that I did. 32 listings that's nothing there are people that do that in one day and i did 32 listings in one month and no shipments to amazon whatsoever so anyway but i am getting myself together i am so much better than i was feeling i um 
I totally expect to rock out next month. It's going to be like rock out time um, for June. Uh, so I'm really excited. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put my May video together sometime this weekend or maybe, you know, on Monday uh, for my sales updates because May was a really amazing month and I sold some really amazing things and I really want to share those with you guys because I don't want you to miss out on some of the bolos that I had because they were astronomical. But anyway, thank you very much for sticking with me for this super long video and I can guarantee you that May's video is going to be just as long if not longer because... It's a whole month, and this one was only three weeks. So, anyway, I really love you guys. Thank you so much for supporting me. Um, I cannot thank you enough for uh, all that you guys do to make me feel like I'm important. I really appreciate you. So, anyway, love you guys. I hope everybody is having a really amazing sales time. I know that right now people are talking about that it's slow, but like I said, eBay is like a garden. You cultivate it, you plant it, you fertilize it, it grows, and it will harvest for you if you actually put the work in. So anyway, mwah! love you guys. Everybody have a really amazing weekend. Bye!